Uh, so welcome everyone uh, to our MS Translate interview today. It's a pleasure to be joined by Dr. Christian Gruber, um, who's from the University of Vienna and uh, about to transition to the University of Queensland here in Australia. Um, you may be aware of Dr. Gruber's work from a, a summary piece that we published last week about plant cyclotides and the effect that they may be having as a potential treatment for MS. Um, Christian, thank you for joining us today. Um, I might just get you to give us a bit of an introduction to yourself and tell us how this project came about. Yes, thanks a lot uh, for giving me the chance to comment on the, the recent study we published. Now, um, as you mentioned, I'm at both universities at the moment. Uh, my main uh, research place is uh, Queensland. So last year I went on and moved to Brisbane uh, on an ARC Future Fellowship. Uh, but the most part of the study has been done here in Vienna at the Medical University of Vienna. And we have, as you know, uh, found and identified a circular plant peptide which potentially could help uh, and make its way as a drug for multiple sclerosis. Now, we and I have been working with those uh, type of peptides already since more than 10 years. Um, we initially, or they have been initially discovered in the African medicinal plant, Oldenlandia finis, which is also the source of the peptide now mentioned uh, in that study. And they have been thought of as really pharmacological treasure trove, meaning that uh, the plants make those circular peptides for reasons we don't fully understand uh, currently, but possibly for the plant to give it uh, like uh, as an a way of uh, survival fitness with regards to uh, insect predators, for example. Nevertheless, these peptides do show effects in a multitude of different disease models, amongst them being uh, immune cells. Now, when we started, we took an extract of the plant and we simply tested how uh, immune cells, namely the T lymphocytes, would be affected in their capacity to proliferate uh, in the presence of those uh, that plant uh, extract. And uh, as you are aware of, a proliferation of, of uh, immune cells is one of the crucial steps in developing multiple sclerosis, namely if uh, the immune cells are uh, proliferating too much, if they have an overreactivity, that is one cause or initial cause of developing uh, the disease. So what we found is uh, those peptides in the plant, we eventually isolated one major uh, active ingredient, one of those circular peptides, and we continued working with the isolated one. So as of then, we didn't work with the plant extract, but with the isolated peptide. And we saw an anti-proliferative slash immunosuppressive effect. An immunosuppressive effect, I understand, is fairly broad and, and non-selective, but what we do see is that our, the effects we observe are mediated mainly by the cytokine interleukin-2. And I think in that regards, our uh, uh, compound distinguishes itself from other current medications which are in place to treat uh, and ameliorate uh, multiple sclerosis symptoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, now from that initial discovery we made on a, on a cellular level, uh, we then designed experiments to test uh, its efficacy in an animal model, and uh, we, cho we chose a rodent model of multiple sclerosis, and <clears throat> I think the, the most exciting results are that a one-off uh, dosing um, and oral dosing. So that's the good thing about those peptides. They are very stable. So you can give them uh, orally and uh, they don't get degraded in the stomach or in the gut, which is uh, with most uh, peptide pharmaceuticals around these days, you know, you have to give them intravenously and they only have a very short half-life. But those are very stable, so you can give them 
in the form of a tablet, if you wish. And that's what we did. And a one-off treatment uh, uh, of that uh, cyclotide, the T20K, we call it, uh, you call it, the media calls it, was really effective in uh, reducing the symptoms uh, of uh, the typical MS symptoms in those uh, animals um, to a degree that they did not appear to have any symptomatic uh, episode anymore. Okay, so I think that was the, the most exciting result. <clears throat> now, on the other hand, we also uh, tested the sort of how would you be able to cure, uh, cure is maybe the wrong expression, but how to treat the symptoms once they are already established. And I think that's an interest to, uh, to most of the people who are affected already now by, by multiple sclerosis. And in the animal model, again, we saw that at least, uh, that's what I can say, that in the animal model, the uh, administration of the peptide would hold or stop any further uh, symptoms, okay? So what we think of is uh, we could approach uh, both um, a treatment options, one more as a prophylactic means uh, to sort of give, um, not before you get diagnosed, obviously, but uh, at the moment where you get diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, uh, if you would be able to get receive uh, treatment with the drug, it may stop even uh, symptoms at all. Or the other option would be once you have been uh, getting episodes of multiple sclerosis to at least stop progression of the episodes. Now, this is probably the most crucial part of my interview today, so this is very, very difficult right now to translate uh, these results we've been observing in animal models to humans, okay? Uh, because <clears throat> it is just two different symptoms. Now, what we need to do right now is to to test first of all safety and efficacy in an animal model and then move on to uh, clinical trials in humans mm -hmm. and uh, we are doing or trying to continue that project at the moment with a company in sweden called Psychzone, and uh, this company will be responsible for all further development and uh, according to the plan we could see this compound, this peptide derived from the plant in phase one as soon as 2018, given that uh, we have no safety concerns uh, in the animal models. Yeah, and I mean, I think interestingly as well, in, the, in that first study, you, you also compared um, the efficacy in the animal model anyway against some current MS medications and saw that they actually did better um, in some cases than, than what's currently available. Well, this um, I wouldn't go as far as uh, claiming that they would do better, okay? <clears throat> I mean, this is some criticism we, we received from cl clinicians asking us, well, what can your drug or what could your drug do what others can't? Now, <clears throat> First of all, uh, as far as I know, there's only three uh, specific MS drugs around which are available orally slash which you can take in tablet form. So this is an advancement of ours because it can also be. So it's one of those few which can be uh, taken uh, by mouth. Um, uh, we compared in our study the efficacy to uh, Fingoli mode. So the Gilenia, I think, is the, uh, the name, the marketing uh, name, and uh, we do see very similar uh, effects. Now, we can't really comment on, on, on potential side effects. Now, we know Gilenia is not the safest thing mm -hmm. uh, if you take it chronically and you uh, often have to take it on a daily basis, but I think many patients uh, um, tolerate it quite well and do not have major adverse effects, but there is the occasional uh, 
issue with it. Right? It's yeah. just leave it at that. But I can't really, I'm not a clinician, so I can't comment on, on uh, Gelenia and its use. But what we do see in the animal uh, treatment uh, that we can compare an efficacy with uh, Gelenia on a daily basis, uh, whereas uh, Gelenia in a one-off treatment at a higher dose doesn't show any effects, whereas the peptide at one-off treatment does seem to reduce symptoms. Okay. Yeah, I mean... It, now, I think... Sorry to, 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 yeah. to wrap that up. So, that, I think, is the only difference between the two. But, as I said, Galenia has been gone through uh, the whole of clinical trials, so mm -hmm. I'd be... Very, I'd be leaning out the window very far if I uh, make uh, that comparison translating to humans readily, okay? Yeah. But let's just say, uh, in the animal, they seem to be as good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it's, it's safe to say that it's, it's really interesting and exciting work, and as you say, and it's, it's important to mention that this is a long process, and obviously, uh, as those of us who have been in, in research know, that, that it's a long process, and there are many steps along the way where, where things can change. Um, and it's important that people know that. Um, but obviously we're going to be putting this, this interview out to a lot of people with MS. Um, is there anything people with MS can be doing at the moment to help support the work that you're doing or, or help support the work you're doing in the future? Um, well, uh, to put it short, no, since we are not at that stage yet. Mm -hmm. So, together with the company, as I mentioned, if everything uh, goes well in those last uh, trials we're doing in, in animals at the moment, then uh, the, uh, the drug will be uh, going into uh, phase one in 2018. Okay, and so you know phase one will be on, on healthy volunteers first. It will take approximately one year. It's not really sure at the moment mm -hmm. but so let's say if we are optimistic which we are as scientists um, we um, can expect to see uh, T20K in phase 2 uh, in 2019 but we have to be realistic as well we have to do the testing first. Uh, it's a very uh, meticulous process, uh, pharmaceutical drug development, but it is also necessary and important to really monitor the safety profile in animals first and the efficacy uh, before one uh, goes into humans. And I understand that will take a long time, uh, but at the end, uh, it's good uh, for us and for the people who would receive uh, any drug which will be released on the market so don't want to have any bad uh, you know surprises afterwards so that's why i think it's it's really necessary to go through that process even though it may not uh, offer uh, you know an immediate relief to people suffering from ms symptoms now i understand so this is very difficult but yes we have to do all those trials first yeah, and it's just it's crucially important to make sure that when anything actually gets out there that it's, it's as safe as it can be and as, as effective as it can be for, for people with MS. Um, Absolutely. In, in the meantime, just to, for them just to stay interested, stay engaged with the work that's being done and, and we'll keep them updated with, with the progress as it comes to hand. Yes, so what we intend to do is uh, obviously any news, any new developments, uh, we will communicate again via our universities, via uh, uh, MS societies, so that really affected people get the, the latest news. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the only uh, thing or help I can expect at the moment uh, is that uh, we will uh, get funding for those projects because only with public uh, uh, funding we can, you know, carry out all that research for developing T20K further, uh, as well as for starting new uh, projects on related autoimmune diseases, etc. Okay, so that, that's important to mention. Yeah, and I think we're yeah. seeing more and more that, that the sort of projects that the public gets behind and support just by being enthusiastic and being vocal about it um, can, can have an impact on, on the level of funding that, 
that scientists can receive for them. Um, yes. So, so that's really important. Well, um, you know, thank you again uh, for taking the time to talk to us. It, it's it's really much appreciated, um, not only by myself and, and MS Translate, but by all the people um, that are part of our community. Um, as we've sort of discussed, it, it's really important that we think that research is communicated um, really clearly and really strongly to the people that, that it's going to affect. Um, so thank you again for your time uh, and good luck with the project and, and all the research and the move to Queensland. Thank you very much. Thank you.